Welcome back to Holistic Developer, your number one place where you find information about how to get further and faster in your tech career. Today I have a question for you. Do you know what's the best way to improve your code quality? If you are curious to find out more, stay tuned and I'll be sharing that in just a moment. Today we'll be talking about code reviews. And according to a study that was conducted by SmartBear in 2019, it was discovered that the number one way to improve your code quality is to do code reviews. In this video, you can expect to hear the purpose of code reviews, the benefits of code reviews, some best practices, tools, and types or methods of code reviews. So moving on to the first one, what is the purpose of code review? And that can be found in the definition of a code review. Code review is one of the most important software tests of the existing coding techniques. What is actually code review? During a code review, developers have their code reviewed by their peer developers, who will evaluate the code and ensure that there are no issues with the code, that the quality of the code is as it is expected. Moving on to the benefits of code reviews. Again, according to the survey that was done by SmartBear, the number one benefit is improved software quality, sharing knowledge across the team, ability to mentor less experienced developers, increased collaboration, and many other. Moving on to types or methods of code reviews. And currently there are three types. First, it's ad hoc or also known as over the shoulder, meeting based reviews, as well as tool based reviews. So what is ad hoc code review? So basically imagine that I'm right now writing a, a method. The method is returning a Boolean to tell me if the, uh, the number that was passed in is a perfect square or not. So I implemented everything and then I want another set of eyes to look at my code. So I'll ask my colleague that is sitting right next to me or somebody else to watch what I implemented. And also sometimes you might have a question and you want to ask them, is this the correct way to implement this or something like that? So that's kind of in a nutshell, what is the over the shoulder code review or ad hoc code review. Next one is meeting-based code reviews. And by the name, it's self-explanatory that you will have a meeting, that you will go with the people that you want to review your code and go over the code and make sure that the quality of the software is correct, the implementation is up to the standard and everything is as expected. The last one is tool-based code reviews. And in that case, that are certain tools that are you are using as a software developer to request your peers to review your code. So let's imagine that I just finished up writing my code, my class, my implementation, whatever it is, and I want somebody else to review my code. And I don't want to interrupt anybody from what they're doing right now, and I would like them to review it as a their le leisure when they have time, right? So I open up the tool that I'm using currently, and I'll enter the names of the reviewers that I want. Maybe I want two, three, four set of eyes to look at the implementation that I want it to be reviewed. And then I'll add some description and I'll include the files and everything that needed to be reviewed and sent. And by magic, the people who I added to review my code will get notified either in the email or another way of notification that there is a code that is waiting for their review. So that's kind of a tool-based review. What are some current known tools for code reviews? The most obvious and the most popular is GitHub, GitLab, then Bitbucket, um, Visual Studio, Collaborator, also by Resharper where there is AppSource, and there are so many, many, many other ones, but these are just a few uh, to name the tools that are currently used in the market by developers to do code reviews. So far, we covered the purpose of code reviews, the most important benefits of code reviews, the types of code reviews, tools, 
And now we got to best practices for code review. So to get the benefits of code reviews, you have to have some process into in place that will guarantee those results. So some best practices, best recommendation would be to have set clear expectations. So everybody knows what is the expectation from the code process, code review process. It has to be clear for the people who are sending the code review request and those who are receiving it, who are reviewing it. And in order to simplify this and make it more streamlined and easy to, to do, it's to have probably a checklist. And having a checklist is a win-win for both parties. So again, I'm a developer, I'm writing code, and I'm about to send my peers to review my code. So my best practice would be to, if I have a checklist, to make sure that I'm walking down the checklist and everything is okay, everything is according to that. So um, I know that my code is ready to be code reviewed, then I can send that code to be reviewed. When the reviewer gets the request, they, the same, can get the checklist and make sure that they are reviewing the code and nothing is missed, everything is according to plan, everything is according to the process. Another recommendation is to make sure that you don't review the code more than an hour, because in that case, you might be missing important or you might miss bugs and then you don't want that bug to get into production. Also, a recommendation would be to, as a developer who is requesting to have a code review, don't send hundreds and hundreds of files to be reviewed. Don't have, like, if you have a user story, don't implement everything in one user story that is massive, like more than 400 lines of code and expect somebody to review it. You should have that breaking down into smaller manageable pieces that can be evaluated. And the best practice would be there to have no more than 400 lines of code. So as a developer, don't send more than 400 lines of code to be reviewed. And as a reviewer, don't review more than 400 lines of code at one sitting because, again, you might be uh, missing important um, bugs or missing important stuff that might get into the production. Another best practice is to have a positive culture for code reviews. You need to know that the code review is Essentially, the code being reviewed is not the actual person being reviewed or anything like that. So you have to have a positive culture and everybody to be clear what is the code review process about, what is actually happening. Let me know if you found this video useful. I'm curious to know if your company currently does code reviews. So just add a plus in the comment below if your company is doing code reviews or a minus if it doesn't. Thank you very much and talk to you in the next video. Bye-bye. Happy engineering.